Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to start our gingham decor with this ball mason jar. I picked that up from Target. And this gingham ribbon that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. They were selling this during Valentine's Day. And this burlap ribbon, which you can get in several different colors from Dollar Tree in the floral department. And the first thing I want to do is to wrap the burlap ribbon around the mason jar one time using hot glue to secure it in place. Now you do want to be careful with this because the holes in the burlap ribbon does make it very easy for you to burn yourself. So please be super cautious while you're doing this project. Go ahead and cut off the excess burlap ribbon. And then you want to cut off any of the loose ends that um, may be sticking out. Don't pull them, just cut them where they are or else the whole thing will unravel. Now I want to wrap the gingham ribbon right around the middle just like that one time around and again secure that in place with hot glue as well. So this is what it looks like so far. You could leave it like that if you wanted to, but I decided that I wanted to add one more little bit of whimsy to it. And I'm going to go ahead and make a little shoelace bow using the gingham ribbon. And then I just want to even out the ends of the ribbon. And then I'm going to attach it to the center part using hot glue and just that simply our first gingham project is done now we're moving on to the second one and this is a photo frame that you'll find in the party section of dollar tree they have several different kinds this one is the one with the cleanest lines, and so that's why I chose this one. And I found these wood borders in the teacher section. I'll put the information for that in the description box below. And so I just want to line it up vertically with each end of the frame. Now they do extend wider they are wider than the frame but I'm not going to cut that down to size it's unnecessary I am however going to cut off that excess piece at the top that sticks out and then I'm going to measure the other piece of wall border against the one that I cut and then cut them even so that they are the same length So now that there is a perfect fit, I'm going to take tacky glue that I picked up from Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach the borders to each side lengthwise. And then I decided that I would try to match up the borders on the shorter part of the frame. It didn't really turn out the way that I wanted it to, uh, but you'll see that there is a fix for that coming up later. but I did want to try it. So I went ahead and covered the top and the bottom part of the frame. Now I'm going to take one of these skewers. These are the long skewers, the 32 inch skewers from the Dollar Tree, and I just need one. So I'm turning it over and I'm just measuring the length 
that I'll need, making sure that it fits all the way. And also I will cut one horizontally as well. So after I've cut the skewers, I'm going to go ahead and give them a coat of paint with Ceram Coat Burnt Umber. And I did pick this paint up from Target in the craft section. So I give the skewers a couple of coats of paint and set them aside to dry. While they dry, I'm going to take this gingham tablecloth, also from Dollar Tree. And after I remove it from the package, I want to cut a wavy pattern in the bottom of it. And when I open it up, you'll see that it kind of mimics drapery or kind of a valance, I should say, not drapery, but more of a valance. So I hold it up against the frame and I see that it is way too much material. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it down. First, I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise and make a cut down that seam. And because it is still too long, I am going to cut off most of the excess width. And I decide to basically cut it in half again. You can cut it down to whatever size you would like, but that it was the perfect measurement for me right there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it down using hot glue. Be careful with your hot glue nozzle. I burned a couple of holes in this <laughs> tablecloth with just the nozzle of my high temp glue gun. So just a word of caution. So now that my skewers have dried, I'm going to go ahead and glue them down. First, the vertical piece. And I'm going to try to center it as much as possible. And then I will add the horizontal piece. Again, trying to make sure it is centered and also straight. So I'm attaching this to the vertical part of the skewer. And so the ends will want to stick up. So I do add quite a bit of hot glue to each end but I decided to go ahead and use some clamps to hold them in place while the hot glue dries so they don't pop up. And I set that aside to dry. While it does, I'm going to take these two pieces of craft fabric that I picked up from Dollar Tree, this super pretty blue and white gingham, which I just love this, guys. It's so pretty. And also this red. And this isn't a true red. It has a pattern on it. You'll see once I open it up, it's almost like a little tie-dye effect a little bit. So I printed out a template of an apple and I'm going to make this pillow pretty much the same way I made my Easter bunny pillows, my spring pillows. I'll link that in the description box if you haven't seen that video already. So I wanna turn the fabric where the right side of each piece of fabric is facing each other. And I'm going to lay the, temple down, the template down <laughs> and trace it out. Then I'm going to cut it. And you can hand sew this or sew it with a sewing machine, of course, but this is going to be a no sew project for me and I'm just going to use hot glue. You should probably wait a little longer than I did. I was really impatient and um, so the seams were kind of coming apart because the glue hadn't dried all the way. So you wanna wait until the glue has dried completely before you try to turn it inside out. And this is what it looks like so far. 
I'm using the polyfill that I picked up from Walmart and I'm going to go ahead and fill the body of the apple making sure that the seams are filled out and if any seams come loose I will just glue them back together. Now I'm going to take these wood stems and I picked these up from Dollar Tree as well and I'm looking for a kind of tall skinny one and I found one that would be perfect as the apple stem and I'm just going to put hot glue around the bottom of the wood stem and also on the very end of the stem and then insert it into the opening of the pillow and I'm just going to hold it there until it dries. Now I'm gonna fill the little leaf part and I don't want it to be too full. And I'm gonna add hot glue around the bottom. I put hot glue around the bottom and then I dropped it on the fabric just now. So now there's a, an area on the red side of the apple where there's dried hot glue. So you want to insert it pretty close to the stem and adjust it as you want it to be. And that's what I have so far. So this is a reversible little apple pillow. Uh, I decided I wanted a couple of extra leaves so I cut one each out of the gingham and out of the red and attached it on each side. Now guys, this is the part where my phone stopped recording and I had no idea because it was up on a tripod. So now I'm gonna show you what you missed, what I thought I was filming, but I was not. I added this extra piece of tablecloth and this right here is a little hole, again, that I burned <laughs> with the nozzle of my glue gun. And I used one package of the tumbling tower blocks to make this little flower box. So I glued four deep and then three wide at the bottom. And then I glued a whole row across and then another four deep at the end. So this was one whole package of tumbling tower blocks plus two extras. Um, so you can make it as long or as short as you would like it to be. And so now we're all caught up. This is where we are so far. I'm going to take these buttons that I found by the registers at the Dollar Tree. And I just want to find one of the large buttons. I'm going to hot glue it in the center. And then I'm going to take some nautical rope and just weave it along the border between the original piece of the tablecloth and the extra piece that I added on. And I just cut the end off and fold it around the back. And guess what? My phone stopped recording again. I'm sorry about that, guys. But you just missed me adding a large button. And I also added a jute twine bow to the large button. And I also added two smaller buttons to either side of the large button. But here is the final project, guys. Here's our little flower box. I added some sunflowers that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. There you can see the bow and the two extra buttons that I added. Here is our, oh, who is that? It's Keiko. <laughs> Here's our little apple pillow, which I think turned out so adorable. No, the edges are the cleanest, but I love it anyway. What do you guys think about how this project turned out? I'm so super happy. Look at these two. They look like they're guilty of something, don't they? <laughs> so these are our Dollar Tree Gingham Decor DIY projects. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. 
Leave a comment below to let me know which gingham project was your favorite and if you'll be replicating it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate your time so much. I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful, blessed day, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.